how you doing econ students? This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Let's talk about monetary policy. All right, you already know the money market graph, which shows you the demand and supply for money. What we have to go over now are the three different shifters in the money supply. They are the reserve ratio, the discount rate, and open market operations. Let's actually go over these in reverse order. Open market operations is the most important one of the three because this is the one that the Fed does the most. Open market operations is when the government central bank buys or sells government bonds to private commercial banks. Now remember, these are government issued bonds, sometimes called treasury bonds or T-bills. Another word for bonds that you might see is the word securities. There's a trick for remembering what happens to the money supply when it comes to open market operations. When the Fed buys bonds, the money supply gets bigger. When the Fed sells bonds, the money supply gets smaller. So buy big and sell small. So when the Fed buys bonds, it's taking bonds from the commercial banks and it's giving them money. This will increase the money supply. If the Fed sells these government securities or bonds to commercial banks, then they're giving them the bond and they're taking money out of the system. That would decrease the money supply. Now let's talk about the discount rate. The discount rate is the rate that the Fed charges commercial banks to borrow money. If a bank needs money, they can either borrow from another bank or they can borrow from the Fed. The rate they pay from the Fed is the discount rate. So if the Fed decreases the discount rate, that'll make it easier and cheaper for banks to borrow from them, increasing money supply. If the Fed increases the discount rate, that'll make it harder and more expensive for banks to borrow from the Fed, and that'll decrease the money supply. The last shifter of money supply is called the reserve requirement. This is the percent that banks have to hold in reserves by law. So when you put money in a bank, they don't hold all that money for you. They hold some of it and they loan the rest of it out. The amount that they have to hold in reserve is called a reserve requirement. In the United States, the Federal Reserve has set that at 10%. But if the Fed lowered it down to 2%, that means banks could loan out more money and that would increase the money supply. If the Fed increased the reserve requirement up to 50%, that means banks could loan out less money that would decrease the money supply. Now that seemed really simple, but it's actually a lot more complicated. To learn more about fractional reserve banking and how banks actually create money, go ahead and watch this video. So to recap, the Fed can change any one of these three things to increase or decrease the supply of money, therefore changing interest rates and changing aggregate demand. If you like all these review videos, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below. Make sure to check out all the other videos and my AP Economics review apps. Till next time.